Are we in Scotland? Oh, I'm, I'm dazed and confused. I've been chasing this, this wee naked child over hill and over dale. Isn't that right, yeah? Timorous beastie. I'm Dr. James McCrimmon from the township of Balamori. Uh, I have my credentials, if I may. As you can see, a doctorate from the University of Edinburgh. I trained under Dr. Bell himself. Rose, might I introduce Her Majesty Queen Victoria, Empress of India and Defender of the Faith. Does it? Yes, it does. Good. Good. Um, then let me ask, why is Your Majesty travelling by road when there's a train all the way to Aberdeen? An accident? An assassination attempt? She's a feral child. I bought her for sixpence in old London town. It was her of the elephant man, so... I wish I'd met him, I like him. That thing's beautiful. Can I, um... What did he model it on? It's a bit rubbish. How many prisms has it got? Way too many. The magnification's gone right over the top. That's a stupid kind of... Am I being rude again? But it's pretty. It's very... pretty. Stars and magic. I like him more and more. That's Bavaria. So what's this will, then? Then tell it. Oh, that's all right. Save it a wee bit of ham. Besides, we're all waiting on Sir Robert. Come, sir. He promised us a tale of nightmare. You must miss him. And the descriptions of the creature. A werewolf. And what if they were with us right now? We run. You got any silver bullets? There we are, then. We run. Your Majesty has a doctor. I recommend a vigorous jog. Go for the health. We get almost competitive about it. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, I think farting before performing any, of any kind is, 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 a, is a, it's an exorcism. It, you know, gets you ready for creativity. <laughs> but I discover that, that, that John feels the same way, and he, uh, but he can thunder them out. <laughs> I think it's obviously, it's obviously the, the Glasgow heritage, because he's from Glasgow too, and there's, we, we, there's a kindred spirit there, maybe. Just loud, powerful. Powerful. We also discovered that Freema, who plays Martha Jones, the, oh, yeah. the, the new girl, um, really didn't like it, which of course just spurred us on. We used to save them up <laughs> until we could, that we could wander past her and thunder one out. It's great fun. <laughs> Morning. As I'm sure you're aware, my name is Mr. Logan. I'm your new English teacher. Nice to meet you all. I hope you're all ready to get to grips with some Elizabethan literature. Let's all turn to page 53 in our poetry textbooks. I think we'll dive straight in with the bard himself. No, I'm Scottish. <laughs> no, I'm British. No, I'm not, but as you can see, I do speak English. Well, clearly you can. <laughs> no, I'm talking English. Okay, whatever you want. No! Let's get on with Shakespeare. I am perfectly qualified to teach English. You don't have to be English to teach it. Is your name Lauren Cooper by any chance? Your reputation precedes you. Oh, Shakespeare's sonnets. Sir? A sonnet is a poem. Sir. Written in 14 Sir. lines, the last two Sir. of which must form a rhyming Sir. couplet. Sir. Yes, Lauren. Not just now. Hi. Just wait. What is it? Doctor Who. I don't know what you're talking about. You look like Doctor Who, though. I'm not Doctor Who. I'm your English teacher. I don't think you are, though. Lauren. I think you're a 945-year-old time lord. Listen. <laughs> Did you just pitch up from Mars? Don't be ridiculous. You know your house, right? What? You know your house? Yeah. Is it bigger on the inside? You're a bit quiet. If you park the TARDIS on a meter. <laughs> Can we please get back to Shakespeare? Thank you. So... Do you fancy Billy Piper, sir? Right. You are the most insolent child I've ever had the misfortune to teach. You're pointless, repetitious, and extremely dull. A bit like Shakespeare. You're not even worthy to mention his name. William, Sha William Shakespeare was a genius. You, little madam, are definitely not. Now just sit there, keep your mouth shut, or I will feel you in this whole module right now. That's better. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. <laughs> what? Oh, your hair is so stupid. <laughs> oh, <I'm really> rude. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a plait down a man's back. Well, it's for a play. I didn't choose to do this for my private life. And in, and in the play, it is it is unleashed. I unleash the beast. But the rest of the time, it's it's uh, it's kept neatly back there. Yeah. I'm glad I learnt my lines. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's. 
part of the joy of Doctor Who, though, isn't well, it? How could you both be in it? We well, you'll have to tune in and find out, Jimmy. It's exciting. <laughs> no, no, I'm an old whore. I'll turn up for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, there is a bit of a precedent in Doctor Who. Down the years, on yeah. the big anniversaries, some of the old Doctors have returned and oh, right. shaken hands with the current. <laughs> but, but obviously, it's changed through time. So when I was in the TARDIS, it looked different to the one that yeah. Matt's in now. He did, it's much bigger. <laughs> He's got bits that go round yeah. and yeah. yeah. Uh, I am so glad I didn't get stuck in traffic. This is very an out of body experience. Um, so much of tonight now makes sense. All those people lying to me. Um, uh, oh, I, I mean, I grew up loving loving the telly. So thank you. So the fact the fact that I get to make a part of my living by being on the telly is something I have to pinch myself about. To get prizes for it, it just it doesn't compute. Um, I think that, as tonight proves, TV and TV drama in particular, I think is in the midst of a real golden time, and just to be the tiniest little cog in that is something I'm I'm, I'm terribly proud of. But I'm I'm just a hired hand, so anything I've achieved is because talented and clever people have been talented and clever enough to give me jobs. So to any of them, David Blair gave me my first big telly job, Russell T. Davis, Julie Gardner, obviously, uh, Chris Chibnall and Jane Featherston. I've started a list. Don't do a list, I'll go on forever. Um, anyone who's ever given me a shot, thank you very much. And anyone, anyone who's ever let me into their living room on the telly, I'm, it's a real honor and a privilege to get to do that, so thank you. And all the wonderful actors I've got, to, all those people on that film, making me weep. Uh, all those wonderful people that I, I, oh man. Who have I got to thank? There must be some people I should thank. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank Sarah Camlet, Pauline Maris, Harriet Robinson, Jonathan Altraz, Dougie Steven, Nancy Billy, Brian and Jeremy. They're all the people who are or have been my agent. So thank you to all of them. Um, oh, I don't know what else to say. Obviously, I've got to thank my wonderful family, my amazing wife who has lied to me about tonight. Uh, but Georgia and Ty and Olive and Wilfred, who make everything possible, um, but much more importantly, make everything worthwhile. Thank you. I love you very much. Um, oh. And seeing as he was on that film and didn't tell me, I would like to dedicate this to my dad. He's an inspiration and a role model. So thanks, Sandy. And thank you, everyone. This is amazing. Thank you so much. I mean, it is statistically quite unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it... Oh, there we all are. Look, there's the three of us. Yeah. Oh, Thank that's so embarrassing. Bad. I'm wearing the same suit. Come on. <laughs> Doesn't make me look very windswept and celebrity tastic. <laughs> I mean, it's a very nice one. You wouldn't want me to just wear it once, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I was. I now when you start jobs, there's a because of the Me Too movement and lots of you know great strides forward are being made in making sure workplaces are safe. Yep, and yep. so, so now different companies have different ways of coping with that. And I was, I had to for a show I was doing, I had to sit and watch a video and prove that I'd watched this video from start to finish. And it very takes you through things that are acceptable and not acceptable in the workplace. And then, right at the end of this sequence, it, it, when it's talking about how to communicate uh, on your mobile phone and what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate, it says, and remember, the eggplant emoji is not just an eggplant. <laughs> and that's it! <laughs> and I'm left going, what the f*** is an eggplant? <laughs> It's an aubergine, right? I mean, it's, but that's not what they mean. There's a whole, and it turns out, and I, this, I knew nothing about this, there's a whole kind of language, usually based around foodstuffs, <laughs> where they represent other things. Yeah. Yes, asking someone out for a taco could easily be misinterpreted. <laughs> it turns out, did you know that? <laughs> be careful. Did you know about this? Did you know? Because I thought the emojis were just meant to represent what they represented. I didn't know there was this whole kind of other language you had to learn. I am talented. Well, 
Harry Potter made nearly 10 billion. You were in one film. That is not helpful. And only one scene. And, and also a flashback. I was actually, actually in four of the Twilight films. And Doctor Who! Not anymore, baby! Relief? <laughs>